What's up everybody? In this episode we're gonna learn how to integrate the trap objects and the enemy AI triggering. You can see here, if I touch the frog it says frog triggered. And if I touch this one it says enemy boss I'm triggered. Let's go. In every game we're gonna have to face objects that's gonna cause the player to die or lose health. And most of these things are enemy, obstacles, uh, traps, uh, like even uh, moving elements itself. In this episode we're gonna integrate two things. The first one is, uh, I'm gonna call it traps, uh, which is basically a game object that sh whatever you, whenever you touch it you die. And the second thing is we're gonna integrate the, uh, the player enemy interaction that causes the player to die whenever he touches the enemy. And we've already built this, an enemy AI script and you can find uh, the link in the info card on top right of the video when you click the exclamation mark and uh, follow up and build the system and then come here to implement this mechanics. First of all we're gonna have to create a script let's call it trap object okay you can name it whatever you want I'm gonna go with this one and before we go ahead I'm gonna look for a sprite that's gonna work as you know as a spike or anything that is gonna kill the player so let's go ahead let's look at our stuff in here so we got ourselves enemies we don't need enemies effects these are visual effects yep visual effects item feedback yep, same thing I just this should be something in here if not I can use just an, a different object itself okay you know what I'm gonna use an idle uh, I'm gonna use the idle frog as the object as the actually you know what as the trap object and I'm gonna use this possum that we've built as the moving enemy that we die if, if we touch so before we do everything anything let's create a script for so we have the enemy here I'm gonna make another sprite actually you know what I can just drag and drop this let's first make sure that this one has the value of 10 because all, all our game has, has that value and you can create a simple animation by basically drag and dropping all the stuff and put them in the scene. So it's going to create, it's going to ask you when you want to put the animation. Let's go here. Let's call it uh, frog uh, idle. I think that's enough. So we've got the frog in here. If you can see, I'm going to put him in here. And it comes with an animation uh, animator and an animation so first of all let me actually see where is it at so it's in here the object called the animation is called frog idle and the animator is called oh wait the animation is called frog idle and this one I'm gonna call it frog and the animation is gonna be frog idle so if you go here in the animator we see that it has this thing let's call it idle just for the sake of it we're not gonna do anything here it's basically a frog basically a, a static object he just doesn't move so he just look, look, look. let me play with the uh, with the speed of it I think the sample should be way much slower yeah let's go with four And first thing I need to do is let me just increase the, the interval between the first and the la the you know the other frames. So this one will will give it slightly more let's make it twelve as it was. So this one ha gives it slightly more uh, you know more realistic or more nicer animation. So that's it. We're good. And it's also and uh, I like looping. So let's put this in here. Let's go to the uh, script that we've built. Double click. All right. So in here, we're gonna have to do a couple of things. First of all, in order to actually 
interact with the object we need it to have a collider a trigger collider so that's going to be the first thing we're going to do we're going to make sure that whenever we add a script we're going to have to add required required component type of uh, box collider 2d we've used this before in the enemy ai so this makes sure that whenever we add this script and object it creates a box collider and the next thing we need to do we need to actually make sure that this collider comes as a trigger by default it comes as you know collider without trigger so we're going to use the reset method this one the component box collider trigger oh, no is trigger oh man come on is trigger equals true this one it resets the values of the animator sorry in the inspector components so we have we've got this thing done the next the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that whenever we interact with this you know whenever the player touches this something happens we can decide on where we want to do this like we can tell the player which is the fox we can handle the we can handle the uh, trigger in here if you want or we can handle it somewhere else I will go and make it in the script that we've just created this one because we already have the script so we might as well just add its stuff in here so the thing is going to be on trigger enter because it's going to touch another collider in a trigger manner because we have a true so the first thing we need to do is we need to check if the player if it's tagging the player so the fox has here has the name of fox so we we have a different ways of tri uh, detecting who's you know who's triggering who i haven't done this yet in here but i think the we can what we can do we we need to take the fox or any control that you have the player controller make sure to tag it as player or anything else you want i'm going to go with player because it's already there and what we're going to do in here we're going to go if collision this one the tag you can do either contains or equals but I'm gonna go with equal player so what, what happens here trap trigger actually I'm gonna I'm gonna write uh, the name of the object which is frog now this is a, a modifier we can use in uh, strings and C sharp instead of having to concatenate, concatenate using plus plus you can just put that dollar sign and every value you want to input as a variable inside you can put it in like this okay so with this what we can what we have is let's delete these things we've got a box glider added made the trigger and whenever player touches it this happens let's go back in here we've got ourselves the frog object right and let's add the trap pop. So you can notice it, it already added up this thing and with the script itself. So let's go ahead and test it. So if we walk right, you can see that frog is triggered, frog is triggered, which is fine, but we, we got it called twice. The reason it's called twice because this is the game object that has the fox, you know, trigger collider. Sorry, the player, but it has two colliders. It's got two capsule colliders: the upper one and the lower one. And that's what what happens is because both of them are, tri you know, connected to the same object, it's triggering twice. I guess what we can do in here is uh, if this is wrong let's say if you have a health count like a life count you don't want this to do, to go twice right so we want to lose only once so the one of the ways that we can do this is either rework our ground check mechanics sorry not ground check the, the uh, what's it called the whole thing of uh, crouching so right now let's look in, into look, let's look at this in a really detailed manner. So we have two capsule colliders. 
and there, we built this back in the crouching mechanism and you can also get the video on the top right side in the info card if you want to get more details what we're doing is we have this as the default one whenever we walk around and run everything but as soon as we crouch this big one gets disabled and this one is remains enabled and I assume we don't need the lower one active at all except uh, what we when we actually crouch so I think how it's gonna happen is we're gonna keep the big one or I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it the standing collider on all the time but when we crouch we sh we're gonna enable the second one and disable the first one let's see how this how this can be happening in here so let's go up in here go into Fox and before we go in here we have ourselves the standing collider we already referenced this actually it's the box collider I assume it's the upper one because it's the ones that gets disabled so what we need to do we need to make an, a reference of both of them we already have this one the top one I don't know if I can change the name of this thing here but never mind we need to also reference the second one which is gonna, I'm gonna call it the crouch collider let's go back in here let's go top so we got ourselves no not this one where is it where is it yeah here standing collider let's have crouching collider so by default I'm gonna keep this hidden and whenever we crouch we're gonna just swap between them this will be on this will be off and then when you stand up this will be on this will be off simple let's go back here let's go into the crouch script so it's over here here we go so uh, whenever we so that's it we're making the crouch opposite of the crouching stuff so what we're gonna do here we're gonna go crouching collider that's it and then enabled equals crouch flag we've already made this be the opposite of crouching you know the standing collider if you're standing if you're not crouching it's on but if you're crouching it's off which is good but then we have to deal with the other one the other one the crouching it should be off if you're not crouching and on when you're crouching so that's that makes sure this works fine so let's trigger let's reference the collider and do a test and then see how it looks so you can see in the Fox script we've got another one called crouching it's gonna be the second one this one because if you notice it's the lower one so let's make it default uh, disable by default drag and drop it right go more up right here okay so let's put these on the side now this is 16 by 9 and let's take a look on the left side so right now this will we will have one glider at a time let me crouch oh wait huh something is weird in here what was the button of crouching Project settings. Let's put this in here. Input manager. Oh, it's S. That's my bad. I've been clicking the lo the lower arrow. So here you go. If you can see on the left side, we have the standing collider. Now, if I click down, we're gonna have the lower only the crouching collider. Let's hide this stuff. So if I touch this frog right now we're gonna have only one event trigger that's it that's amazing and uh, if we go back in here right now I'm only calling this the debugging this is for this uh, tutorial this is enough but in the next tutorial we're gonna um, talk about how can we make the player die so we've got ourselves uh, a trap object and now we're gonna start with the AI player interaction
we've got the possum on the left side already integrated with I think two points let me just put this here I like it visible more yeah we've got the possum that has two points in here which is really good what well, and it has its own script in here it's called enemy AI great what we need to do is we need to also make the same thing like we did in the trap object literally the same thing here because we already have this in it which makes trigger true and a, a bunch of other stuff that we've done you can see this in the previous videos it's visible in the info card on the top right of the video we need to deal now with colliders or at least triggers what I see so since it has a trigger a collider that's trigger in it we need to also check if we touch the player so when this happens the player gets triggered not that kind of triggered <laughs> So we've already done this where the frog got triggered. So right now let's go jump on top. Let's walk a bit. Boom, we've got a new possum trigger. So this is triggered once, boom, twice. See it? This is how it's gonna work. With these two simple mechanism, we have we have opened the way of building the death and respawn mechanism we which we will build in the next video. For this one, we've reached the end of it, end of the tutorial. I hope you liked it and you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like and subscribe. Also, hit the uh, bell button so you get all the updates. And uh, join our Discord channel to get into more questions and uh, give us more feedback. Uh, other than this, uh, leave a comment if you got any more questions. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh,